The UK military leadership is considering sending troops to Ukraine. They will assist in the training of new recruits, according to The Times. As reported by the agency, plans are being discussed to send small groups of British military instructors to western Ukraine. There, they would help provide basic training to Ukrainian recruits before they are deployed to the front lines in the east of the country. According to the agency's sources, this decision by the UK would help address some logistical challenges related to sending Ukrainian troops to British bases for training while also saving costs. As part of the multinational military operation codenamed Interflex, tens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers have received training in the UK. However, according to British Defence Minister John Healy, the biggest obstacle in training Ukrainians is Ukraine providing personnel for training. Another source mentioned that sending British troops to Ukraine instead of conducting training on military bases in the UK would be cheaper and better. The source noted that training could be conducted there more quickly and it would be far from the front lines, significantly reducing the risk. At the same time, a Ukrainian military source stated that relocating training to Ukraine would send a powerful military political signal to other countries and to Russia. It would also mark the beginning of the de facto deployment of NATO military infrastructure on Ukrainian territory and serve as a strong deterrent. This decision would help allow British troops to acquire combat skills from Ukrainian forces and enable the testing of the latest weaponry being developed for the war. The Ukrainian source expressed hope that British leadership would inspire France to follow suit and conduct training in Ukraine, especially since discussions in Paris appear to have stalled due to political reasons. In early June, French President Emmanuel Macron announced plans to establish a coalition of countries willing to train Ukrainian troops on Ukrainian territory rather than abroad. At that time, Paris sent a corresponding proposal to the Baltic states, Poland, Denmark, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands and the United States. However, many within NATO oppose this idea due to concerns about becoming a party to the war with Russia. Subsequently, media reports indicated that the Netherlands might join the French coalition. The Russian military is seeing an influx of older contract soldiers who are largely seen as detrimental to its war effort in Ukraine, the investigative news outlet Vyostka reported, citing anonymous military and parliamentary sources. Volunteer fighters aged 45 and over now make up half of new recruits in Moscow, a senior mayor's office source was cited as saying. The average age of recruits has risen from 40 at the start of the year to about 50, said another Moscow mayor's office source. They're all sick, a Russian soldier fighting in Ukraine was quoted as saying of these troops. Their legs hurt, their heads hurt, and they're slow. The information was confirmed by a serviceman who is on the contact line in the occupied part of Ukraine's Donetsk region, it has lost about half of the killed and wounded near Chasov Yar, roughly 500 people, he said. They are still sending us additional personnel. Half of those who come are over 50, maybe even more, and not all of them reach their positions. One of the mobilized soldiers from the Luhansk direction told Verstka about the same thing. Only old men are going into battle. Where is our command looking? He asks. One of the airborne officers fighting in the Kherson direction also told Verstka about the age imbalance. According to him, the situation with new contract soldiers is sad. The number of older volunteers began to grow in August, and there are even older ones, 60 years old. A source in the Moscow mayor's office said, citing data on recruitment for contract service in the capital. According to him, at the beginning of the year, the average age of recruits was about 40 years old. Now it is about 50. Older men explain their desire to serve with the following words. I'm already 55. NATO tanks in Russia. Let the young ones sit at home. Everyone in my yard has gone. My friends won't understand me. My whole family is there, the source says. Russia's armed forces have been carrying out a mass campaign to promote contract service since the spring of 2023. In recent months, regional and federal authorities have offered increasing financial and other incentives to bolster its ranks in Ukraine without turning to a new round of politically risky mobilization. Vyostka's report on the country's aging manpower is in part corroborated by the BBC's Russian service and the independent news website MediaZona's research into Russia's verified military death toll. The outlets identified 2,475 volunteer soldiers over 45 years old who died in Ukraine so far this year, a figure that's half of Russia's overall death toll in 2024. 
The Ukrainian armed forces have a plan to destroy the Crimean bridge at the most painful moment for the Russian occupiers. This was stated on the air of Radio NV by Captain First Rank, Deputy Chief of Staff of the Ukrainian Naval Forces in 2004 to 2020, Andriy Rizenko. I think that the Defense Forces have a plan to neutralize this facility as a logistical supply route at the most painful moment for the enemy. The moment when fire control is established or the supply through the Azov region, where 75% of the cargo is delivered in the interests of Crimea and the group of Russian occupation forces in the south of Ukraine, is blocked in some way. Rizenko said, he emphasized that the Crimean Bridge is very important for Russians as it has strategic and ideological significance and damaging this bridge affects Russian President Vladimir Putin personally. This is why they are strengthening it so powerfully, its defense. Now this defense is much more powerful. Indeed, there is an S-400 system there. There are panziers that protect it from the air. Rizenko noted, he explained that in order to protect the Crimean bridge from Ukrainian sea drones, the Russians began to build an iron fence in the Kirsch Strait, which is more than 16 kilometers long, and there are barrier barges on the surface of the water. In fact, 500 meters remain free. This is the shipping part of the canal. Everything else is closed with structures, and indeed, they are actually fixed to the seabed so that underwater drones cannot pass. They are forced to do this because they analyze the threat and really do not want us to attack this bridge, the expert said. In addition, Rizenko explained why the Russians sent warships to sea. I understand that this is primarily due to the fact that the enemy may have had some information that some strike actions are being prepared against these ships. Of course, they are dedicated to October the 8th of 2022. They remember that two years ago, there was an attack on the Crimean Bridge. First of all, I simply associate this with security issues. Rizenko said, 